Hey everyone, how's it going? So welcome to episode 3 of Reel Up My Ride and whether you're new here or whether you're coming back, thank you for joining this episode. Thank you for your comments, your likes, your subscriptions. All of your support really does help. And if you're not familiar with this series, then I take your blueprints that you submit to me. I then take a look over them, inject some realism based on my experience of working for a theme park company as well as my playtime in Planet Coaster. And throughout that process, we have a look at real life examples, we have a look at real life theory and we discuss all of the changes that we've made and the reasons for for it so if you do want to submit your work and submit your blueprints for consideration then absolutely I'll, I'll leave some details in the uh, description below otherwise let's check out today's park shall we this is home for this episode then so it's a park called lakeside and it's submitted by spike gordon so spike thank you so much for this park and as the name suggests it's a park that's being built around one central lake and now you could draw some obvious comparisons from that so think of the likes of sea world and Giaga lake and, and places like that but i don't want to draw those comparisons because the theming that we're using within this park is so much better than the theming you'd see at the likes of Jaga which are very generically themed and so that then leads me to some other things some other parks that are, I think are inspiring this one when I look at the the actual park itself so we're thinking more along the lines of Alton Towers you've got very distinctive themed areas that are areas in their own right they're off the main beaten path and you've got more destination areas than you do through areas um, but then that also leads to things like Bush Gardens Williamsburg so although you're not using country themes as your central area of theming what you're doing is using theming very effectively within the areas that you've got and that then leads it actually quite nicely onto fantasia land in the sense that you're dropped right in the middle of an immersive theme and you've got no choice but to be part of that theme so i'm thinking like the area around taran for example where you 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 look around and you're just there like you've got no choice you're there there's, there's no escaping that that whole theme so let's do a tour of the park shall we because it's a lovely little park um so we've got our entrance area that, that's sitting quite nicely here and i think this is borrowing quite nicely from alton towers but it's a really common entrance area style and then you've got this long plaza area and at the end of that plaza area the end you then spray out to the rest of the park and in this instance you're going around the center of the lake aren't you so um but you've also got this beautiful sight line here in the sense that your roller coaster is the first thing that you see so the end of your entrance plaza here's your roller coaster and off you go uh, but then you can come around to the left and you can come into your coastal area and this is where you've got your log flume and, and your first roller coasters and everything um, and I'm, I'm seeing in this park that you're already starting to think of the realism aspect of your park so you're already starting to think of things like access points and escape points and maintenance areas you're already starting to think of things like using buildings instead of terrain to hide certain things and inside this building is so lovely put together I really enjoyed like this this kind of ride um, and then we come over to uh, the other areas where you've got another couple of coasters and again you've got this immersive idea and again you're starting to think of the realism and you're starting to use some of the tips as well around the idea of only building what your guests see like this this city skyline for example it's believable as a city skyline and you don't need to build behind it because your guests would never see it so they're just a fascia so it's really nicely put together it's really quite believable in, in that in that aspect you then got this uh, seafront waterfront kind of area this main street kind of area and this is just beautiful i love how the the buildings are put together how they're all of a very similar different style but each one is also individual and unique as well and they all different they serve different purposes you've got this sort of back street um, area where you've got some games and stores and, and everything so I like how you've pulled this this area together um, and you've started to make a feature of the water as well so you start to create this clean line across the lake and you started to think about how your guests would interact with that with that water as a as a feature and then we're going to come over to this area as well so your wooden coaster is absolutely lovely um you've got this idea of a wooden coaster that's running around the hills and through a forest and there's this haunted house and so from your guest site i know this side you've got the, the waterfall the water and this roller coaster just running rampant around the landscape that you've got with this haunted house in the middle um and then the other side you've got that that idea of some kind of a village effect um and you again you're using your sight lines and your decoration very 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 well uh, and then we've also got your fantasy more style area um got your inverted coaster and again here you're you're thrown into the middle of this this fantasy style village um, but it works quite nicely with the haunted style village they 
sort of link together quite nicely. Um, and so this episode then is going to be focusing mainly on the main street area here. So I wanted to do something slightly different. I didn't want to do another water ride. I didn't want to do another coaster. I wanted to do a, a sort of another area. And there's a few areas that we haven't really talked about. We've, we've given it kind of in principle when we've, been, when we've been talking, but we haven't really pulled it together into a proper theory episode. And that's the idea of crowd control and guest behavior. And so an entrance plaza area opens up the possibility for all of those discussions discussions quite nicely in the sense that you need to understand your guests you need to understand the behavior you need to understand how they're going to go so spikes asked me to have a look at this entrance area and um, we've got a couple of buildings that we're not allowed to touch so these are the red x's um, and that's absolutely fine completely respect that there's a lot of work that's been put into these um, i'm allowed to move them um just to be part of this entrance area but i'm not going to make any edits to them i'm not going to touch them in any way shape or form because they are really really well nicely put together so i'm um, just going to keep them as they are and so the idea of the of the entrance area is we're going to be looking at this whole plaza area at the very beginning uh, and also trying to integrate the monorail station into it as well. Um, and we need a new ticket area. We need a new uh, turnstile area and everything in terms of actual game itself. So we're OK for TMTK items um, and we're OK for all of the DLCs on this one. Like I say, the only restriction I've got is just on the on the buildings and everything that, that we're doing. So the updates on this one are going to be talking more around the theory of crowd control and crowd behavior rather than the realism of rides. Um, I'm going to save those for another episode. This just creates that perfect opportunity to start talking about the theory of crowd control and how you then plan and lay out entire theme parks. So I just wanted to do an episode episode on that. So without further ado, let's let's get on with the builds. We're going to do this in stages just like all of the other episodes. So the first stage you're going to see um, will be the the, the progress that I've made. I've got to be really careful with this park because it's so lovely put together already. Um, it's such a beautiful park already. I don't want to ruin it. So I need to be really careful with what I do and really mindful of, of the themes and everything that are going into this. But whilst adding that realism aspect in as well, there's there's a few things that, that we can do. So anyway, let's go to the first update and see how, how things change. All right, so the reconfiguration of the area is really starting to come together quite nicely. And this is probably the fourth configuration of the area that I've created just to make sure that the guest flow is right. And I've also just made the guests respawn at the entrance area as well, just to demonstrate the guest flow through this, this new area. Um, and you can do this by pausing the game. You delete the paths from underneath the guest. You, you then do Control z to undo the uh, path deletion. And then you unpause the game and your guests then respawn at the entrance. And I do this quite a lot when I'm testing out areas and testing out entrance areas. Um, and so the focus of this episode isn't necessarily about reeling up a ride as such, but it's about reeling up an area. And the focus of this one is all about guest management. So we're looking at their behaviours, crowd controls and so on. Um, so I'm going to be using UK best UK based legislation for these kinds of principles, but they're actually common sense. You'll find these wherever in the world that you are. You can apply them to your own parks. And then when you are designing an entrance plaza, you do need to understand that what role it has within the park. So is it in the thick of things and it's always busy or is it on the outskirts of the park and will only ever be busy twice a day with the rest of the time it's completely deserted? Now, this is important because what you find in that area will then differ. So you'll have more shops and food places in the first one, but more facilities and gift related stuff in the second. But whichever entrance plaza you do have, you do need to start to understand the guests that are going to visit the park. So do you have a high proportion of kids? Do you have a high proportion of teens or families? Do you have any disabilities in the area that you need to be aware of? What's the culture of the park or what's the culture of the area that, that you're in? Because all of this is going to affect your guest behaviour. It's going to affect how your guests interact with your park. Um, and so, like I say, they affect the behaviour that, that's, that's going on. So, for example, kids are going to climb fences, they're going to run around, they're going to misbehave. But you also need to understand you've all, you're also going to have two types of visitors to the park as well. You're going to have your regulars and you're going to have your strangers. And so your strangers are going to be more indecisive. They don't know where they want to go. They're going to get in the way. They're going to block your paths. But your regulars, on the other hand, they're going to know exactly where they want to go and they always take the same path to get there. So you want to avoid where possible this clash between those two different types of guests. But you also need to be aware of crowd behaviour as well, as crowds will react as one unit, one entity. Now, stupid people are going to do stupid things to do stupid things. So they're going to climb fences to retrieve items. They're going to take shortcuts to get to places because they know where they're going. And the others will follow because the crowd assumes that they're the experts at what they're doing. But this also causes you issues in 
things like an emergency because people are going to escape the way that they know, not necessarily the way that's safe. And this creates an absolute nightmare when you're creating and designing parks because you have to be smarter than the stupid person. But that's way harder than it sounds. Um, and so you need to design the area to accommodate your audience. Now, you need to keep your path areas as clear and as wide as you can by avoiding any unnecessary slopes, steps, obstacles like rocks, benches, bins, etc. Signs for shops. But you also need to consider how you're going to split your guests out as soon as you possibly can as well. So that your indecisive guests and those uh, meddling little kids, they don't get in the way of those who are heading somewhere that's got a purpose. And this is what I'm trying to achieve in this plaza area here. So whilst I've been talking, you've seen how the guests are interacting with the plaza area. You can see that they've quite comfortably and quite happily and quite easily gotten through this area. And now they're hitting bottlenecks up here. And this is going to be the subject of later on. Um, update where we start talking about this idea of guest flow and signage and everything so hold on to that thought for now but you can see straight away that this plaza is now much wider it takes the opportunity to split the guests out as much and as quickly as humanly possible so you're either coming down here down to the left or you're going to go straight on to the to the roller coaster um, and we just need to be aware of what happens and bunching up that's going to happen here so I want to move the queue lines of these two rides so that they're out of the way of the main plaza area the last thing you want to do is to have crossing of paths and interference so like these exits for example would be interfering with the main flow of guests and so you want to avoid that crossing wherever you possibly can likewise with this roller coaster i like that this has got a separate plaza area so this has been set aside and that's going to now not interfere with with, with this with this area here i also by the way just want to take you around some of the shops that have been marked as, as crossed because i've got rid of the others i haven't got rid of i've moved them out of the way um and i just wanted to, sh to show the appreciation of this of this pizza pen i mean it's awesome it's the whole glass fronted it's very nice and cozy love it it's so good um and then likewise with these as well i've so I've moved them around and reconfigured the area but like they, they're designed quite nicely and i can see why they were why they were marked as keep um along with the the carousel and um these areas that are up here as well so yeah this this is the work that i've done with the plaza so far um so the actual work itself has worked out quite nicely it's uh it's, it's coming together so the next thing we need to do now is just talk about facilities and think about how we're going to get guests into the park so uh, we need ticket booths we need uh, turnstiles we need some kind of admin area as well that's that's the type of thing that you would find in this area and then in the next update we're going to start talking about turnstiles and the function of those turnstiles and how many you should have for the number of guests that you're going to have um but that's that's enough for this update i've, I've spoken quite a lot of like actual theory to do with the, the plaza area itself but we're going to start developing this because these these principles then also start to apply to the areas of, of the park but we'll deal with that at a later update i'll let you digest that first so anyway i'm going to carry on building this plaza and i'll see you for the next update all right so it's time for your next update and i've been doing a few little tweaks to the main plaza area just to start bringing this idea of guest behavior and crowd control to life so we'll go through that in a moment but before i do i just wanted to give you a bit of an update of what's going on in this in this front area here so the park itself didn't really have a ticket booth area you had no way that you could go up and either buy a ticket or put uh, pick up a prepaid ticket or whatever you needed to do so this is what i'm starting to do here it's really rough around the edges um, it needs a lot of tidying up and needs a bit of like polish and everything but this is what i'm starting to do um just with the idea of these windows um and all these are, are just the uh, the adventure pieces turned on their side um on pretty much everything a bit of a, a brick foundation um some fences that are going along here uh one of the, the beams uh, and so on so i quite like how this sort of looks quite rustic and quite old and a bit battered and a bit worn um and I've, I've sort of taken the cues a little bit from around the park. So had a look at some of the theming that's been used and how it's been used and everything. And I'm starting to try and bring all of that to life and bring it together. Uh, the other bit as well that we we didn't have at the very beginning was this idea of a turnstile area. Um, and so I've now introduced many, many more turnstiles than we had before. So obviously I need to do a lot of work with this. It's just the very beginnings of, of how the turnstile area would work. But actually it introduces us quite nicely to another one of the principles that we've got when it comes to crowd control um, so when when you're operating a park and you're operating any kind of 
crowd control system where you have this idea of a small area at the front and a larger area behind your turnstiles are really going to be the bottleneck of, of what you're going to be doing and so you need to consider how those turnstiles work now what you'll tend to find is parks will have far more turnstiles than they actually need and there's a reason for that so when you're dealing with mass amounts of, of people that will descend on your park in one go and they'll be waiting out, outside for your park to open you can set uh, your turnstiles to have a bit of a throughput target um, so we're not talking performance related pay targets or anything like that but we're just talking about the number of people that can actually physically enter into the park uh, and you can then restrict or uh, release the number of people that are going into an area based on how busy this how busy this is so what you'd tend to find is that you would open a number of turnstiles to start with see how it goes and then if you're still getting crowds and you're still sort of backing up in this area and causing the bottleneck then you'd open more turnstiles and then allow those people to flood in but you wouldn't necessarily open with all of them to start with because then you're going to create a flood here and then you're going to end up with bottlenecks going on down the park so it's just a way that you can start to control the number of people that are going through your plaza area and so in the original design we had here we would have had a large area going into a small area and so you would have had a bottleneck at your turnstiles fewer number of turnstiles that you could open because you didn't want to crowd this area here so that's the reason that i've sort of added more more turnstiles here this larger plaza area and then the larger entrance area as well and then when it comes to uh, what's coming in here, so it's going to be probably lockers. Um, I, I've seen it in a couple of parks where you have lockers at the very entrance and it's before the turnstiles. I don't really know why they do it. It seems to be an American thing, but um, that's going to be what I'm going to put in here. And then when it comes to this idea of crowd control and guest distribution, where they're going to be going, I'm going to be putting duplicate facilities in so um, we're going to have toilets and stuff down here we'll also have toilets here and we've also got toilets here and again you do this to distribute your crowds so in the first update we were talking about how we can split off the crowds into three directions really quickly at this bottom bit here to avoid that crush to avoid the paths crossing over and to avoid all of the people that know where they're going get out of their way because they're going there and then the indecisive people that may want the toilet that may want something to eat so on and so forth um, and so the idea of splitting and duplicating your facilities and placing them apart from each other is that rather than having a batch of guests who need the toilet going to the toilet going to one single toilet they then split off and they go to multiple toilets instead um, and so that's another way that you can sort of use your guest flows effectively to split them apart so that you're making the most out of your plaza area and we also discussed the principle as well of um, avoiding any kind of unneeded slopes and steps and things um, so making sure that your plaza is really open but at the same time you can also subtly use them to discourage discourage certain routes as well um, and so that's what I'm trying to do here so thinking of your guest flows where you're going to have people heading towards the roller coaster and heading away from it your two flat rides your monorail and your uh, merry-go-round that you've got here you've got quite a few paths that could potentially cross over and that's kind of what I'm trying to avoid here so at the top here you've got a, a mini plaza area that's going to be able to service the entrance and the exit to the monorail but to try it's not really working in planet coaster because the AI was obviously taking it down that way but in real life these steps here would subtly create a uh, an element in, in a guest brain to go oh I don't want to go up those steps it's a bit of an effort so I'm just going to carry on and walking around what that then does is it leaves this top area quite free to service the monorail entrance and exit um, but it does also mean that if this area is ever clogged then it, you've got a, an alternative way of still going down to the right hand side here um, because you can either go up the steps up the ramp and you can sort of go around the crowd it's something we sort of touched on in the first episode when, when we were dealing with the uh, the coaster there and building that higher up principal area it's, it's this the other thing then to consider in this area is about the the idea of um, guest guest safety. So the idea the idea of guest behaviours is that, as we already know, we've already discussed it. Guests will behave in a certain way depending on who they are, what they do for the park, and what they're experiencing with the park, etc. So you are you need to prevent certain behaviours. So we know that kids will climb, we know they'll run around, we'll know that, that you know we need to keep them safe and we need to keep our guests safe. And so when you're designing an area like this, you need to decide if you can either prevent them from doing something or if you just have to go with it and make it safe for them to do it. Now, 
what, what I'm thinking here is you either build fences to stop them from doing something or like for example we've got this water in front of pizza pen here so let's just assume for a minute that this might be deep water and we've got kids around so we know they're going to climb we know they're, they're going to want to splash they're going to want to go and play and everything so you kind of you kind of have to decide at this point whether you prevent them from drowning or whether you work with them wanting to splash so with that in mind you either put fences up around here with the appropriate compliant warning signs you know the deep water or danger of drowning or whatever sign may be relevant and compliant or do you not make it a body of water at all and you make it a splash pad so you remove all of the rocks that are along here you open up that path a little bit more so it's it's a little bit safer but these these fountains here are actually a splash pad so what you've done there is you still created a water feature in front of pizza pen but you're preventing your people from drowning it's not a body of water and that's one thing as well that we needed to consider here so we're going to put a, a flower bed in so we know that we're using obstacles to make the um pathing go a certain way but do you want them to interact with the flowers do you want them to interact with everything that's in in this middle here do you want them to play do you want them to pick flowers etc um or do you want them to stay off so if you want them to interact with it then you're okay with low walls keep your walls low let them reach over let them do what they want to do but if you don't want them to that's when you start introducing things like fences um, and so you sort of need to think about how you're going to pull that pull that area together but just remember though that people will always alter their behavior based on any kind of instructional or direction signage so if you've got keep off the grass signs people will tend to comply with that you'll get the odd idiot that, that won't but remember stupid people will do stupid things to do stupid things so you're always going to be dealing with that um, and that's where you then make that that decision do you want to build the park to prevent that kind of behavior or do you just want to build it to work with it and that's where you're kind of going with that so i just wanted to bring that principle to life a little bit that we're using obstacles to to direct and influence the the flow of traffic and we're also using safety in a in a specific way as well so um do you want to work with it or do you want to work against it and so that's where I, that's where I'm heading at the moment. So I'm going to carry on doing the plaza area. I'm going to carry on doing this this front entrance area, and then I'll see you for the next update. All right. So it's all starting to take shape, and I think this is going to be the penultimate update. I think I'm just going to power through and get this done now. There's not really much more to talk about when it comes to guest behaviour, guest flow, and, and everything. I think we've pretty much nailed it off. The only thing really that we're going to cover in this update is about the signage and and how you can manipulate people's behaviour based on the signage that you're using and and the safety features and everything. So we've got a new entrance area. It's all starting to take shape. It's all starting to come together quite nicely. Um, now we're working with quite a small area, so we're quite limited with with what we can really do so I'd like to just sort of take the opportunity to talk you through what I've what I've done um, in terms of crowd control we're going to assume for the sake of this park that your car park area would be the the bit where we've got the graveyard of the buildings um, and your people and your guests would walk down the side of the uh, park and come into the entrance area here so as a result you would want to have your tickets sort of immediately available to your guests here um, and then from here they move to your entrance and then from the entrance they move to the plaza and then from the plaza they start to distribute around the park so you're sort of thinking about your flow your flow there you're not crossing paths people aren't having to come over here to get their tickets into the entrance because then you're starting to cross traffic and, and everything so this is kind of what I'm got what I'm going for here so we've got uh, I think this is probably a bit small uh, it's a bit of a small building for the size of the park that we're dealing with um but there's plenty of room if if we wanted to double it up we probably could um it would fit quite nicely here and make a bit of a bigger area uh, but this is this is what I've done with the the ticket booth I tidied it up I've given it a, a bit more detail um it's now looking quite nice um I just need to do some flooring work along here just to make it sort of fit and everything but yeah this is and obviously the landscaping and everything still needs to be done uh, but this is looking quite nice um, I'm, qu I'm quite pleased with how this has turned out in the end it looks quite rustic it looks run down it looks quite weathered and that's the that was the feel that I was going for with uh, with this one I wanted it to feel weathered and then we've just got the door in the middle uh, this is very inspired by the way uh, by the Alton Towers ticket booths that sense that you've got all of these windows either side you've got a central staff door and they would enter into here into the back you would have staff rooms and everything and I've not decorated or anything like that inside there are people out there that do and wow they are just incredible at it um, some of the, the the internal office 
spaces that I've seen pictures of on like Facebook and whatever are absolutely incredible. Um, couldn't even compete, so I just don't even bother. <laughs> um, and then we come across to our uh, to our entrance area. So I've just added this bit of escape platform from the uh, from the monorail. Uh, so it's kind of anecdotal, but I don't know how true it is that a monorail is most likely to break down just after or just before the station, if not in the station. And so we've got some kind of escape strategy here that if it were to sort of break down along this side, you could just open one of the doors, get people through that door and then down and out that way. And so you've also then got your signage along here. Um, and and a, just, to, just to recap on the other previous episodes, all of your signage, especially in the UK, they have to be a certain size. They have to be a certain wording or a specific size, should I say, a specific wording, specific colours and specific imagery as well in order for them to be compliant. Um, and so I don't know if these would be UK compliant. They just pulled off the workshop. And so we're just going to say that in Planet Coaster World, they are I, I use them. I use them a load. So whoever created these signs, you're an absolute genius. Um, yeah. So you've just got the the gate here, and we're going to hide that and make this a bit more concretey. You've then got vehicular access <clears throat> that comes through the um, that comes through the turnstile entrance, and again, it's signed off. It's it's sort of like obvious that that's a no entry, and then you've just got this gating here. Um, you don't really make much effort with your gates. They're just gates, right? They're just there to stop people from, from going through but when the park is closed you can bring vans through and there is actually enough space I've checked you've got enough space you can get the bin lorry through this way um so that's that's sort of like your access point there then you've got your turnstiles um in an ideal world I would have liked to throw this into the scenario editor bring your park boundary right back so that I can put the actual park entrances underneath the ground so that this is already considered to be inside the park but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that it's not my park to mess with so i've just kept the in-game ones for now but um i would have liked to have put some of the proper turnstiles in along here so but it's fine it, it works this auto save is going to be a nightmare as well um so it works absolutely fine as a uh, as an entrance point you get you get the idea um and in terms of guest flow as well and thinking of the culture of the park you would then need to decide whether you would need security checkpoints or whether you didn't have any need for that because you know that you can trust your area so like parks will decide that on an individual basis um and so then over on the other side here which is, i'm just gonna wait for the auto save to finish uh i decided not to do lockers in the end i was like i was, I was in two minds and i and i did it as a locker thing i thought it doesn't really make sense why would you have lockers outside to go into the park to have to then all come all the way out again just didn't make sense so instead i'm thinking this is going to be more toilets facilities and also annual passes so you can come and renew your annual pass and you can come and uh, come and get that. Uh, so I just had to put some flooring down just to give it a bit more um, bit more life to it, make it come to life a little bit. And I just started to outline where I'm going to put the uh, the crazy bathing style concrete. Um, and I've just done this, this here as well. Um, and I've also just started to put the boundaries for the planters in um, so that we're sort of getting ready for the for the final phase. The monorail station I've just thrown together. Um, it looks quite nice on the sight line, but it's very basic. It's it's sort of functional rather than pretty. Um, and I think this is what the park would probably go for. Um, it's just going to sit on the sight line. And you're going to be distracted by some good gardening and, and planting anyway. Um, and looking at pictures and everything of the monorail stations, they're all quite bland and quite plain anyway. So you've also got your toilets, your facilities here. And I've also just done the same over here as well. That principle of splitting it, splitting it out. Um, and then I've just done some work on the on the octopus. So I didn't really talk about this in the last update, but in terms of splitting out guest flow, um, this is sort of like a plaza area. It's unavoidable. Uh, if if this were my park, I wouldn't have these two rides here. But I'm not going to delete them because it's not my park, so it's not my place. Um, so what I've done is I've worked with the idea of guest flow a little bit better. So I split off the, the exits. You can still get to the roller coaster whilst not really interfering. The main the main thing I wanted to achieve is that the exits of these three rides weren't interfering with the main plaza area. And I think we kind of achieved that here. Um, yeah, so I've just done some queue line work as well. And the, the other thing to do with crowd control is that you tend to find that your queue lines, although this is the to the extreme, and this one as well to the extreme your queue lines will always have a touch point with your main path after the entrance so like halfway through your exit you'll find that it'll double back and that there will be some kind of access to the main path and that's for fire exit purposes or emergency purposes that you can evacuate the queue 
more efficiently. So remembering back to the first update where we said that people would leave the way they know, not the way that's safe. So it's our job as park designers to actually create that safe space for them. And so what you'll tend to find is that queues will either line a path or they'll come back and they'll touch the path every now and again, uh, just so you can put an, an escape so that you can just open the escape um, routes and then people can just leave, can just leave that way. And then this bit here, I'm still toying. This is still quite tight. Um, but like I said in the last update, if you were to make these splash pads, that opens it right up to the to the boundary here, and that, that would be fine then. Um, so I'm kind of using that that principle that this is what, what we would do. It's not causing a problem in game at the moment, so and the game would tell you very much about it. So anyway, that's the uh, that that's the update. So I think the next one we're going to do will be all finished and all done. So here we go. All right, so it's time. Lakeside has a whole new entrance area. Sorry, are you ready for this? Let's do the before and afters. Here we are. So that's a pretty big change, but without it being a dramatic change. And that was the whole idea of this episode. It wasn't about stripping an area back and reinventing it completely. It was just about opening it up and making it fit for the crowds that you're going to be achieving in, in this park. Especially for a park this size. The entrance plaza that was here originally just wasn't going to be small enough to cope with the number of guests that you were trying to f uh, flow through it. So... This episode was more about talking about crowd control, crowd behaviours and, and understanding the guests that you're going to have. So um, I think we've achieved that quite nicely, actually. I think we've, we've gone through a lot of the theory and we've gone through a lot of the reasons why areas are designed in such a way. So let's have a look around, shall we? Let's let's actually see see what we've done. So I finished off the ticket area. Um, I've just put in the, the queues and, and stuff bit of clutter a bit of decoration just around just to just to bring some green to life just to bring it sort of up a little bit um i've not done anything along here by the way uh, i don't i didn't want to go on on i needed to know when to stop just like the other episodes so um i'm sure that's something that will be finished by spike when he gets the park back um and so i've done the season pass offices uh so this is now looking really really good this 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 area this entrance area i know i say this pretty much every episode but i'm surprised at how this has turned out there was a point where i wasn't entirely sure about it i was a bit like this is this is not turning out how i wanted it to it looked just it just didn't look right but it's come together nicely um and i think it's the text and everything that's done it so season pass office i've done um i think I think it was Jubilee Gardens I saw this design sort of building on um, quite, a, quite a time back as well like when they were doing the, the episodes and everything so um, I liked I liked how they did it like this idea of using the uh, the wood beam and the windows and stuff so cre credit to them for, for this kind of design um, yeah and these letters I believe are Idro's letters um, you can find them on the workshop there TMTK items they are so good they're really 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 good and then I've just put some clutter on the outside you know, postcards and some stuff um, I didn't want to put too much here in terms of um, merchandise and stuff I don't I don't think it would be the right place to put it but yeah um, and this build as well doesn't really lend itself very well to doing backstage areas so there's not really a lot you can do so I've just built one here just for the sake of it you'd absolutely have access issues here underneath the monorail you'd probably want to realign the um support pillars and stuff but i've just put the usual clutter around the back um a couple of electric cabinets and appropriate signage and stuff now 
I've, I sort of did this purposely to sort of demonstrate how you would work in this area and get crowd control and everything. This one would be fine to have on, on display. You'd need a key to get into the cabinet anyway. You've got the appropriate signage, but you've got a lot here that can go wrong. So you'd probably fence it off and you'd have some kind of access to it. Um, stop fans and whatever driving into it as well. Uh, and obviously the lighting and everything around it. And then we come to the actual entrance area itself. This font is available on the workshop. It's not a TNTK, it's this one. I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was by. Um, but that's, yeah, I'm, I'm totally using this again. I didn't even know this one existed. So it looks really good. Um, and then the entrance sign I just did myself. Um, just pulled together just some smaller letters. Cause it's purely because it's smaller than these ones. Um, and I, so they sort of look like... Um, Planet Zoo ones, sort of, you squint. Um, I've just put some other signs up as well, so I know that we've been talking about crowd control and people altering their behaviour based on signage around you, so I wanted to sort of bring this to life a little bit more. So I've just put the, the signs above here, so season passes would come into this one, disabled access would be here. You'd obviously have a much more politer sign than I've just put here, it's disabled. Um, so, but yeah, just gives the idea. And then also the disabled signage as well, and you usually leave that at sort of eye level, so that any disabled person would be able to see that quite easily um, and then we come into the main plaza area looking fine in its wideness now and again just this principle of splitting the crowds off into as many different directions as you, as you possibly can um, and we were talking about the indecisive guests not knowing where they want to go so how do you draw those away from this area and go oh I don't know where I'm going what do I do well you put a map in front of them so those indecisive guests are now going to walk up to the map and they're going to be out of the way and they'll be able to check out the map. You might want to put another few maps around, you know, just to spread them out a little bit more. But one is representative of, of what you're trying to achieve. You're, you're getting them out of the way, right? You don't want them in the way of your regulars that know where they're going. You don't want them in the way of people that are coming up to the monorail or going to get something to eat and stuff. So, uh, yeah, so it's there. Gift shop. Um, I've just put some clutter outside the front that guests just, just got to walk through the posters. Um and the toilet's obviously now got now got flooring. I didn't really make much much of an effort on here. And obviously I'd committed and promised that I wasn't going to touch these buildings at all. So that's exactly what I've done. Um, I've left them absolutely alone. If, if I had the, the ability, I probably would have edited them slightly. I would have made them open plan. I would have opened them up a little bit. But no, they work absolutely fine as they are. They're, such, they're, they're really well designed buildings. So they, they, fit the, they fit the purpose. They fit the, the new area. Um, quite nicely you know they don't look out of place they don't look silly um, they're really really well put together so I'm glad that we left them as they are then you've got your carousel um, on the back here uh, which is now quite nicely uh, got the foliage and everything and I've, and I've kept this sort of clear of flowers and stuff um, intentionally because it creates a bit of a juxtaposition to this area here um, and it just creates that sight line into the carousel it's quite nice just to keep it clear sometimes you need you need dead space in a park you need places where it's not busy because then that draws out the detail where you do the detail so that's why the monorail station is a bit more basic and a bit more bland because there's better things to look at um, in this area so you sort of have this as a bit of a blank space Toilets, like we said in the previous update, um, you've got that uh, that facility splitting. So you've got toilets here, you've got toilets here, and your guests will split apart to do that. Uh, then you've got your monorail station here. So I've just put some signage up again, just to stop people from falling off the edge. They wouldn't actually be on this side anyway, but um, yeah, you've just got your, your signage up to stop them. Um, you'd probably have fire exit signs and everything here as well. Does that just spawn in? Does that just randomly appear? Okay, whatever. Um, and then you've just got your uh, your plants and everything. So this this is back to the principle of um, do you want to prevent your guests from doing something or do you just want to work with them and make it safe for them to do it? Um, and so with this one, we've just got a, a wall up. So it's obvious that it's a walled off area, but you've got flowers on the other side. And if they're going to climb into the flower bed, then it's safe for them to do so. You've kept it clear. There's no, there's no obstacles. There's nothing sharp or anything like that. They can just do what they want in the flower bed. Um, you just hope that they don't and then we've just got the uh, the seating area around here we think we're gonna fight with the auto safe and this is got this is got a long auto safe as well uh, so we've just got the seating area around this this area again it's about it's about not putting obstacles in the way of your 
guests, um, but using them to break up the flow of people. So people are either going to walk down this way and come through down to the left hand side or they're going to come down to these shops and then you're splitting your guests away that way as well and so that just quite nicely just quite nicely works in our favor um i've just decorated all of this area here as well so this is now a bit of a nicer plaza area haven't moved the rides but i have moved the exits um, as you saw in previous updates so this is now sort of away from your main flow of everything um and I've done this. I've done the principle here. Um, I've just added the fence along the um, along the ride perimeter here. It was needed, I think. Um, but we've now got two barriers between the guest and the ride. You only need the ride signage, the ride area, to stay out um, on the furthest fence, on the on the fence that's closest to the ride. You don't you don't need it down here uh, because this is a flower bed. So you're already putting a natural barrier in the place. Um, you. <sighs> possibly you possibly might get away with not having signage here I wouldn't want to personally I would still put the signage up um, just because and I found these on the workshop as well they're TMTK items they're just like ride safety signs I haven't made any ride signs like this because our focus wasn't on actual rides itself so I'll just put those there for the sake of it um, you would probably if this is water um, you would probably have a caution water sign or something here. If it was, if it was a splash pad, then you probably wouldn't need to bother. Um, you don't need to go overkill. It's like here in here in the UK, we tend to, we tend to end up being risk averse rather than risk aware. So we try and prevent as much as we possibly can, and that's the idea of risk assessment: is either eliminating a risk or reducing a risk to the point where it's completely safe. And nine times out of ten, signage and fences do that. Uh, but sometimes it's a bit overkill sometimes sometimes you just need to leave it to people's common sense but at the same time that then opens it up to all sorts of litigation so um, you sort of go oh I don't know what to do for the best um, and then I've just put this this little pad in um, it's just to hide the fact that the pathing system is, is a bit whack um, and it's just to give the impression that the park may have extended and widened this path to accommodate for the fact that this is quite a busy ride um, and that's why your entrance and exit are completely opposite sides as well because this is quite going to be quite a crowded area as it is um, so I've just put that in just to represent the fact that this is probably one big path area um, and then over on the Roctopus ride I've just cleaned up the um, just cleaned up the queue made the, the fence appropriate um, and then just put all of the curbing all along here as well uh, I didn't do anything with uh, Warlock the roller coaster here I've left that completely as it is and then I've just lined off everything with cypress trees, uh, just to create a bit of create a bit of sightline, a bit of variation on there. Um, and so, oh, and the other thing to show you is how I did all of this. So, because this is one that I get asked quite a lot, especially when people watch the Colwell Wonderland video. Um, so these are just a load of the firehouse roofs um, that are placed down, and they're laid into the ground um, like that. And then along the outside, they're all of the, uh, where are they? These ones. So they're within the, um, the, the support framework. It's these ones laid on their side. Depending on how wide you want the area as to whether you use the two meter or the four meter, but you just lay them down on their side, sink them into the ground to create a bit like a, a bit like an outline. And then I just use the two meter firehouse roofs just spammed across copied across um, in certain lights it you get the you get the shadow reflection and it's and it looks a bit unsightly um, but in like in this light it looks it looks fine you don't actually see it at all so uh, yeah that's how I do those and I just do that right the way across and it just gives it gives you the ability to, to hide things like the unsightly path configurations that you've pulled together and it just gives the impression that this is a wide open space when actually it isn't you know we've got a triangle here that we're dealing with we've got a triangle I think here that we're hiding we've got one definitely one here um, and I think there's one here as well that we're that we're sort of like successfully hiding but it just gives the impression that it's a wide open space um, just gives that little bit of extra realism to the area doesn't it um, and so yeah this is this is Lakeside's new entrance and it's looking mighty fine um 
another one that I'm actually quite chuffed with how it's how it's turned out. And there was a there was a point very early on when I thought I can't do this one. This is too much because this is already a really good park to work with. I was just like I, in the first update. That was the fourth configuration of the entrance area I had because I just couldn't get it right. Um, but it's worked out quite nicely. And I like this effect as well. I don't know where I saw this. Um, I've seen it recently on a video, but I can't find the park that it features in. But they also use it at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Uh, outside Infusion, the roller coaster, that's, that's like a, a checkerboard um, floor. So I just wanted to use that in this area. And it's, it's, like, it's quite nice, actually. It just gives that impression that it's a, it's a warm area. You'd imagine this would probably be a bit dusty. Right, um, and it would look it's it's one of those really strange things that would look amazing when you jet wash it so it gets dirty over time and it gets grubby and it's this it's like this uh, the consistent grey that you get when everything's everything's dirty and then when you jet wash it you, you reveal the pattern underneath it like that satisfying feeling that you get I don't know if that's just me that does that by the way I'm just telling you more about me than you probably should um, yeah so that's just like that that's just what I like um and so yeah, that's uh, that's Lakeside's Lakeside's new entrance area. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do uh, like and whatever, then leave a like in the bottom. Um, you can leave a comment if if that's what you prefer. And if you subscribe, then thank you. Um, really, really does mean the world, especially if you want to see more episodes. Uh, I think I already know what the next episode's episode's going to be, um, which is the first time at the end I've gotten to the end of one episode knowing what the next episode's going to be. So, Spike, thank you so much for this park. This was an absolute pleasure to work with, um, especially as you've just got such a good sightline and a good layout and everything that you've got going on already. So I hope that I've done I've done your entrance area some justice. Um and so guys until next time please take care of yourselves. Um details on how to submit your, your parks and your blueprints and everything like I say at the description below. Um but until next time, until we speak next time, keep keep safe. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.